Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is part one of lesson 8.3. We're looking at inverses of matrices. Three objectives for this video. We are going to verify that two matrices are inverses of each other. We're going to use Gauss-Jordan elimination to find inverse matrices. And we're going to use a formula to help us find the inverse of a two by two matrix. So let's say that matrix A is an n by n square matrix. We would represent its inverse with this A with a little negative one power on it. Now we talked about that identity matrix in the last video. Remember an identity matrix is a square matrix where we've got ones running along the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Well, when we take a matrix times its inverse in either order, either inverse of A times A or A times the inverse of A, we should get an identity matrix back. And that's how we're going to confirm that things are inverses when we're dealing with these matrices. Now, if a matrix has an inverse, we would say that it's invertible or another word we could use to describe it would be non-singular. So first thing we're going to do is show that matrices are inverses of each other. And we're going to do that by using our matrix multiplication. So first thing we've got is we're going to take matrix A times matrix B. And we're going to use that row by column multiplication. So we're going to go first row times first column. Well, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And 2 times 1 is 2. If we add those together, we get 1. If we take our first row times our second column, well, negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. And we get negative 2. So 2 plus negative 2 is 0. So there is our new first row. If we check out the second row, first column, well, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And if we add 1 to that, we get 0. And going second row times second column, negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. And if we add negative 1 to that, we get 1. So we took A times B and got an identity matrix. So it worked in that order. We should also check matrix B times matrix A because doing the multiplication in the opposite order doesn't always yield the same result. So we're going to check it as B times A as well, just to make sure we get that identity matrix back. So taking B times A this time, we're going to go first row of matrix B times first column of matrix A. So negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And negative 1 times negative 2 gives us positive 2. So adding those together, we get 1 in that first row, first column. Then if we go first row of matrix B times second column of matrix A, well, 1 times 2 is 2. And if we subtract 2 from that, we get 0. Then if we go to the second row from matrix B and first column of matrix A, well, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And if we add on 1, we get 0 there. So then now we go second row times second column. 1 times 2 is 2. And if we subtract 1 from there, we get 1. So doing the multiplication in both orders gave us an identity matrix. So now we can officially say that A and B are inverses of each other. So we're going to look at finding the inverse of a matrix. So let's say we had matrix A as this 2 by 2 matrix. In order to find its inverse, what we're going to do first is attach an identity matrix onto the end of matrix A. And since matrix A is a 2 by 2 matrix, we're going to attach a 2 by 2 identity matrix. So it looks kind of like an augmented matrix with this additional piece added onto the end. And then what we're going to do is perform some row operations to this new matrix to get it in what would be reduced row echelon form. So if we start by getting this matrix in row echelon form, remember row echelon form has that leading one at the beginning, and top row already has that, so we're just going to copy that into our new matrix. We need to do a little bit of work with this second row because we need a 0 in that first column and a 1 in that second column. So I think if we take that second row and just add on that first row, I think we'll be OK. So add those things together, we get 0, 1, 1, 1. And fill that into our second row here. So now this is in row echelon form, but now we need to get it in reduced form. And remember, for reduced form, we start from the bottom and work up. Bottom row is already good, but we need to do a little bit of work with that top row. So 1, 4, 1, 0. We need to get rid of the 4. So I'm thinking if we take our new bottom row times negative 4, we'll get 0, negative 4, negative 4, negative 4. Then if we add those things together, we get 1, 0, negative 3, negative 4. And we can fill that into our top row. 
So by getting this thing in reduced row echelon form, we now have that identity matrix on the left hand side. This two by two matrix on the right hand side is going to represent the inverse of matrix A. And in order to confirm that those things are actually inverses of each other, we're going to take our original matrix A times our supposed inverse of A. And I'm going to do that on my calculator. Now, I already had matrix A typed in to my calculator. I took that inverse and typed it in for matrix B. And then I checked the multiplication in both orders. So A times B and B times A. Both times when I did it, I got an identity matrix. So yes, these two matrices are inverses of each other. Checking out this three by three matrix, just like we did with our two by two matrix, first thing we're going to do is attach an identity matrix onto the end of this. So it'll go one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, one. So we're attaching that onto the end of our three by three. And now we're going to work on getting this thing in row echelon form, then reduced row echelon form. So as we're building our new matrix in row echelon form, top row is good because it leads off with a one. So one, negative one, zero, one, zero, zero. A little bit of work we need to do with that second row. So we've got one, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero. We need to get rid of that one. So I'm going to take top row times negative one. So negative one, one, zero, negative one, zero, zero. And if we add those things together, we end up with the new row, zero, one, negative one, negative one, one, zero. And filling that in, zero, one, negative one, negative one, one, zero. Then we're on to that last row. We need to get rid of the six and the negative two. So six, negative two, negative three, zero, zero, one. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of that six by taking top row times negative six. So then we get negative six, six, zero, negative six, zero, zero. And adding those things together, we end up with zero, four, negative three, negative six, zero, one. Now we need to get rid of that four in the second spot without putting a number back in that first column. So I'm going to use our brand new middle row here times negative four. So zero, negative four, positive four, positive four, negative four, zero. And adding those together, we get zero, zero, one, negative two, negative four, one. And we'll fill that in on our bottom row. Okay, this matrix is in row echelon form, but now we need to go reduced row echelon form. And remember, we could just fill in the bottom row as is. So 0, 0, 1, negative 2, negative 4, 1. Then we're working our way back up. We need to get rid of that negative 1 in the third column of our second row. So I'm going to take that row, 0, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 0. And I'm just going to use our bottom row as is and just fill that in, 0, 0, 1 negative two, negative four, one. Adding these up, we get zero, one, zero, negative three, negative three, one. So we'll fill that into our middle row, zero, one, zero, negative three, negative three, one. Then we've got to work on that top row. We need to get rid of the negative one in the second column. So I'm going to take that top row, one, negative one, zero, one, zero, zero. And we're going to add on our brand new middle row because that'll get rid of the second column number without changing the first or third column numbers. So zero, one, zero, negative three, negative three, one. And when we add those things together, we get one, zero, zero, negative two, negative three, one. And we can fill that in on our top row. And then we should confirm our inverses by doing multiplication on our calculator. I typed in our original matrix as A and our brand new three by three matrix as B. When we do A times B, we get our three by three identity matrix. When we do B times A, we also get the three by three identity matrix. So yes, these things are inverses of each other. Now when we're finding the inverse of a two by two matrix, there is a quick shortcut that we can take. 
So let's say matrix A has entries A, B, C, and D. So what we can do in order to find the inverse of matrix A, first thing we're going to do is swap those A and D values around. Then we're going to change the signs on our B and C values, but we're going to leave those things in the same spot. There is a little bit of extra multiplication we need to do. We need to multiply by 1 over A times D minus B times C. So let's say we're looking at matrix A as this 2 by 2 matrix. We're going to find the inverse of matrix A. First thing I'm going to do is do that 1 over AD minus BC. So 1 over, if we take A times D, well, 3 times 2 is 6, minus, if we do B times C, we get 2. So that would end up being a fourth times, now we need to do a little bit of work with our matrix. We're going to swap those A and D values. So 2 goes to the top left, 3 goes to the bottom right. We need to change the sign on our B and C values. So we get 1 and positive 2. Now we're going to distribute that 1 fourth through our matrix. So 1 fourth times 2 is a half. A fourth times 1 is a fourth. A fourth times 2 again is a half. And a fourth times 3 is 3 fourths. So this new matrix is the inverse of matrix A. Checking out the inverse of matrix B. Again, let's do that 1 over AD minus BC. So A times D, 3 times 2 is 6, minus, if we do negative 1 times negative 6, we get 6. So this gets 1 over 0. We can stop right now. Okay? We can't do 1 divided by 0, so B does not have an inverse. Okay? The inverse of this matrix does not exist. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.